Degrees, radians, and arc length. In this lesson, we'll go over how to convert degrees into another unit of angle measure, the radian. In a circle, there are 360 degrees, but a radian is related to the angle that describes an arc length equal to one radius in length. Let's evaluate. Here's a circle. Here's the circle separated into quadrants with degree markings, 90, 180, 270, and 360 degrees. Here's a circle radius marked as a red line segment. If we take this length of radius and bend it into the shape of an arc, this arc equal in length to a radius forms an angle from zero degrees. The measure of the angle is one radian. This measure of angle relates to the radius of a circle to the measure of an angle. How many degrees does this angle look to measure? I think it looks to be about 60 degrees. Next, we continue our path around the circle for another radius arc length. I call it two radii, plural for radius. And here's the angle that's defined by the arc length of two radii. This angle has a measure of two radians. And we extend our arc length yet again, another length of a radius. So the angle described by three lengths of a radius is an angle of three radians. I would like to point out that an arc length of three radians gets us nearly halfway around a circle. What number is familiar in math and especially geometry that is a little over three? It's this number, the constant irrational number pi. So we say that 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. When we go all the way around a circle, you might remember the formula for the circumference of a circle, c equals two pi r and using this relation between degrees and radians we can write the equation 2 pi radians equals 360 degrees. So we can rewrite this equation by dividing both sides of the equation by 2 pi and that gives us 1 radian equals 180 degrees divided by pi. And we can also write this equation as 1 degree equals pi over 180 radians. Here I've shrunk the circle and left some room to work some problems of conversions involving degrees and radians. Let's work this problem. How many radians are there in 45 degrees? To solve this problem, we use this conversion factor that one degree equals pi over 180 radians. Here we have 45 degrees times pi radians per 180 degrees. The units of degrees divided by degrees cancel to equal one what you might be tempted to do is solve by multiplying 45 by 3.14, then dividing by 180. What I hope you will learn to do is keep the angles in terms of pi whenever possible. It makes the arithmetic a whole lot easier, plus avoids the rounding errors that happen when you use 3.14 or a decimal approximation for pi. The skill of answering in terms of pi is a more advanced mathematician skill. So that gives us 45 divided by 180 times pi. And 45 divided by 180 reduces to 1 fourth. And by convention, we write this as pi over four radians. Now for future reference, we can label pi over four radians as the halfway point between zero and 90 degrees, just like 45 degrees, which I've done on the circle at the upper right. Let's do another problem. How many degrees are there in pi over two radians? To convert to degrees, we'll need to use this conversion factor, one radian equals 180 over pi degrees. And here it is using the conversion factor, pi radians over two times 180 degrees over pi radians. The units of pi radians over pi radians cancel to equal one. We're left with 180 over two degrees, which simplifies to 90 degrees. So we'll mark the pi over two radians right above the 90 degrees on our circle. Let's do one last problem of conversion. How many radians are there in 30 degrees? Stop the video, then try to solve the problem, then play on to see how you did. Here we have 30 degrees times pi radians per 180 degrees. Degrees divided by degrees cancel to equal one. This is a good way to see if you're doing it correctly. The units you are converting from will cancel each other. What we now have is 30 over 180 times pi radians. 30 divided by 180 simplifies to 1 sixth, and by convention we write this as pi over 6 radians, and this is our answer. 
Sometimes you'll see it written as just pi over 6. However, I like to write in RAD for an abbreviation for radians, especially when just beginning the use of radians, like you might be, and this lesson assumes. And we place pi over 6 in our unit circle in the place of 30 degrees. In a completed unit circle that we can use for reference, there are 16 points, and so far in this lesson we've made a good beginning for a completed unit circle. For the next part of the lesson, we'll look at the formula for arc length, which we include because of how closely it ties into the relationship between degrees and radians. The formula for arc length is S equals R theta, or R times theta. In this formula, S represents arc length, R represents the length of the radius, and theta represents the measure of the angle. It's important to know that the measure of the angle must be in radians. So if the angle is in degrees, it must be converted into radians. And with this equation, as in many other types of equations, if we know two of these values, we can figure out the remaining or third unknown. A great format for solving these types of equations is setting up what I call a magic circle. Inside the circle, we have s divided by r times theta. Let's see how it works by looking at a problem. A circle has a radius of 5 meters. If an arc of the circle is described by an angle of 2 pi over 3 radians, what is the length of the arc? Using the magic circle, we're solving for the length of the arc, so we cover up the s in our magic circle, the one we're solving for. I'll cover up the s with my thumb, so that gives us what's left, r times theta. And r times theta is 5 meters times an angle of 2 pi over 3. So simplified, our angle is 10 pi over 3 meters. And this would be our final answer in math language, leaving the fraction and the pi symbol as they are now. But to have the answer in decimal form without the symbol is easier for the average person to understand. So we can rewrite the answer as approximately 10.472 meters. And just as a check, we can look at a circle with 2 thirds pi drawn in with a radius of 5 meters. That would be 120 degrees. The arc is sketched in orange. If the radius is 5 meters, the arc looks like it could be a little over 10 meters, just like our answer. And we box in our answer is correct. Let's look at another problem. If a circle has an arc length of 60 feet and its radius is 15 feet, what is the measure of the angle that describes the arc? For this problem, we'll draw a sketch of the circle with its arc and radius first. To solve for the angle, we cover up theta, the symbol for angle and the magic circle, which I again do with my thumb. And that leaves us with S divided by R. And that becomes 60 feet divided by 15 feet. Feet over feet cancel to equal 1, so we're left with an angle of 4 radians, and I placed RID there to remind us that our answer is in radians. And 4 radians looks like it makes sense since pi radians is 180 degrees, and 4 being greater than pi would mean an angle over 180 degrees. From here we can convert to degrees by multiplying, multiplying 4 radians times 180 degrees over pi radians. Radians over radians cancel to equal 1, and converted to degrees, the angle is approximately 229.183 degrees. And this angle looks like it could be about right, so we box in the answer is correct. Now we'll look at a problem where we know the arc length and the angle and use these values to determine the radius. An arc covers 150 degrees of a circle. If the arc length is 15 meters, what is the radius of the circle? To solve using the magic circle, we cover the R with the thumb. What is remaining gives us what we need to find the radius. So the radius is s over theta, the arc length divided by the angle of the arc. So that's 15 meters divided by 150 degrees. So that would give us a radius of one-tenth of a meter, since 15 divided by 150 equals one-tenth, right? No, that answer doesn't make sense. We need to have the angle in radians. We get from degrees to radians by multiplying degrees by pi radians over 180 degrees. Degrees over degrees cancel, so the angle is 5 pi over 6 radians. So we, we replace the 150 degrees by 5 pi over 6. And using what we should have learned in 7th grade, dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of that fraction. So this becomes the radius is equal to 15 meters times 6 over 5 pi radians. This simplifies to 90 over 5 pi meters, so the radius is approximately equal to 5.730 meters. 
And since 180 degrees would be more than three times 5.73 meters, this radius of 5.730 meters comes off as a reasonable answer, which we box in as correct. In this lesson, we've gone over converting degrees to radians, radians to degrees, and the use of the arc length formula. This has been Degrees, Radians, and Arc Length. Thanks for viewing.